the issue with one of the issues with Zora is uh, abuse. She yes. has a boyfriend that's uh, that's yes. hitting on her. Um, and emotionally abusive. And emotionally abusive. Yeah. Um, you 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 deal with the issue of infidelity with with your father on the show. Yeah. And and your mom on the show. Yeah. And, and, right. and my wife and I have gone and, through and it too. And your wife. And then the whole um, pastor uh, Skanky Bishop Skanky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that whole thing with him and yep. and him with the money in his yep. church. And you and your dad, I mean, there's a lot, yeah. you, you you guys hit it all. This yeah. is like a, my, all my mom's a issues so and, yeah. you know, and her family issues and stuff with her parents and her brother and her sister. Her sister, I mean, Oprah. Like, yeah, yeah, every single person, you know, yeah. my niece and, you know, right, who's yeah. my That's sister right. Grace's that daughter yeah. and her father and the whole right, gay her issue mom in church. and my younger sister and, yeah. right, and that, yeah. I, like, it's like, so every, and my sister who's gone, because mm -hmm. remember the show starts. That's right. From Jump Street with faith being lost. Right. Pun intended. Right, right, yeah. Right? I got you, I so got you. So it's like, so all of this stuff is happening. So yeah, whether it's suicide, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, uh, rape and incest and molestation and all these things that are happening in real life with right. real families. So mm -hmm. that's really the point of this show is this is just a regular family of regular people. Right. You know, and so everybody should see themselves in this show right. because this is you. We are you. And you have the capacity to be us, good and bad. Right. And we are you, good and bad. It just so happens that we're also these remarkable people right. who are brilliant, smart, beautiful, attractive, successful, loving, you know, mm -hmm. like all these really dynamic things. And that's what people want right. to see, too. Yeah. But then the other thing is what people also want to see is the fact that these people are flawed. Mm -hmm. They're broken. They're confused. They've been in pain. They're traumatized. I mean, you know, right. and this is generational stuff, too, yeah. that families often deal with. Right. And until you really, really, really deal with it, it doesn't go anywhere. Right. So you're seeing behavior, abusive behavior in my child. Mm -hmm. That actually is a reflection of abusive behavior that goes back two, three generations before me. Right. You know, so it What's doesn't that? go. Mm -hmm. If they don't get healed and dealt with, dealt with, they manifest themselves in the deficiencies right. in the great, great grandchildren. OK, so, you know, I believe uh, even with all due respect, I believe that Jacob and Carissa mm -hmm. actually have had uh, abusive stints in their marriage and in their relationship. Mm -hmm. It just so happens that, in my opinion, and what I've tried to help create is that we see that the man is not the abuser, he's more the abusee. Mm -hmm. His wife is actually abusive to him. Wow. And funny okay. enough, most people don't even see it that way, which wow. is part of the problem. Okay. We only often see that abuse going in the other direction. Right. So there's even some sexism when it comes to identifying what abuse is and what it looks mm -hmm. like. But that little girl yeah. is actually her father's child. Right. Right. Naturally, it's a mother's child, too, but she's very similar to him. Mm -hmm. You know, the pressure that she's been under all her life under these really successful, powerful, you know, parents that have this really strong identity. As a girl, she's under pressure, especially mm -hmm. from her mother. Just like as a boy, I'm under heavy pressure from my father. Right. And that's some oftentimes what the dynamic is. So in my opinion, what I see a lot going on with Zora is very much what Jacob mm -hmm. is and has been going through throughout his life. Yeah. So similarly, we ain't really dealt with that, <laughs> and here it is manifesting yeah, itself it in going, my child. Yeah, right, man. Right. So let's we got We got to get on top of it. Right, right. So let's talk about you. Your DC guy all day. You got family here all day. You went to Duke Ellington. Southeast, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you're the man. Or, you're the man in town. Hey, all right. You got hey. your, your shirt. When Muriel's you done, I might come back and run for me. Oh, okay, all right. Got okay, it. if she if man. she'll have it. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> let's work it out. You heard it here first. Right, right. First, folks. All right. Ruck of wisdom. I love it. That's perfect. <laughs> I like that. See, that has a that has a nice ring to it too. It hey, man. Hey. I'm, uh, I and then I say, then governor of maybe we'll pick Maryland. Of Virginia. Yeah. Let's pick one. Well, you know? then I got to make sure I can clear this background check first. No, nah, I think you're going to be good. Okay, right. Again, we'll work on it right now. <laughs> okay, we'll if get... some of the folks can get away with what they've been getting away with in the Supreme Court and likewise, <laughs> we can we can cover our tracks okay, by right. the time we get there. I that's you. that's good, all it takes. Good point. Good just point. Had, we just right. had the right crooks in, in the crew. <laughs> we just need some crooks. Yeah, some fixers. That's right. Some fixers. That's right. All right. So the look. American way. That's how this country was built. Tell me about why you're in town. You're with the mayor. You got a special adventure in town. For yeah, man. Very excited about the uh, Mayor's Arts Awards, mm -hmm. our 33rd annual, and this is celebrating 50 years of artistic contributions uh, from and throughout the city uh, of, of D.C. And uh, it's everything from individuals to organizations mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, nonprofits and um, whatever. It's like different, uh, you know, all kind of different people and entities that have been instrumental in creating uh, 
you know, the environment, the creative and cultural environment. You know, I think we we talk about they've been talking about this as the culture capital, yep. right? O L. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I also think this is a, a city that has countless creative capital. A L. Right? right. So I mean, and that's what this is about: is acknowledging the creative capital that exists in this culture capital, right. and uh, we've got a lot of it. Um, I'm a product of it, mm-hmm. and a, a proud reflection of it, and somebody who continues to come back and contribute and pour back, you know, into it. Um, and I'm proud to say my family does the same. You know, my mother and my sister are uh, are dancers and teachers and choreographers and you know, poet and this, this and that. You know, my father's a master master drummer. And so there's so many people here. You know, the Conqueron Dance Company. You know, there's Melvin Deal and. I mean, I can, I can go just over and over and over. You know, Carol Foster and the DC Youth Ensemble, uh, you know, Nubian Theater um, Company. It's like there's so many folks that, I mean, I've been around so much incredible culture. I've, I've performed and been educated in so many of the theaters and, you know, community centers around this city, you know. Um, it, it's just it's the memories and the, the impact that this city has had on me personally, academically, you know, um, and creatively, artistically, is absolutely immeasurable. So uh, this, this t- tonight is about acknowledging those people who are still doing that work and whose lives are often committed you know, to this work on a daily, ongoing basis. So we thank them, we shine on them, and tonight is just one opportunity to, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to, to push them forward and, and, and celebrate them. Okay, all right. Like, I'm, I'm, we're getting down to the end now. Take your I time, man. Got, I could be here all day you with you, gotta, man. We good. I, I know you got Listen, stuff I'm to home, do. Listen, I'm home, baby. I know you got stuff, stuff to do. Come Come on, can we get man. something to eat? Uh, can we get, like, I'm actually you know getting a little hot. Can we get something to drink? I'm good. What we got? I, I see popcorn. Dude, uh, you, you got, like, a whole on. living room. You this place is beautiful. You don't want that popcorn. Where's this door go? I need to know what. You don't want to go back there and you don't want that popcorn. Trust me. You don't want that popcorn. That popcorn's been there since before. I got here, and I've been here 15 years. Oh, wow. So, yeah, right. I don't yeah. know if you want any There's probably that. something else living in that yeah, popcorn machine. It may start moving in a minute. Yeah, yeah I'm done. I'm place. good. Okay, I think right. I just saw the little star foam yeah. scooper yeah. Uh, move a little up. bit. Yeah. yeah. You don't, you all right. Don't want that. But this is beautiful, that. man. All right. Thank Shout you. out Fox 5. Thank you. All right. So, look, what does Lamont Rucker do when he's not busy working and running around, traveling, being a star? Man, again, this is part of it. I love to come back here and pour back into this city, man. I love getting involved. You know, and, and, and the things that are important, whether that's, um, you know, being in the community, the, the work that I've done in, um, with HIV and AIDS and, yep. and in education and in policy and, uh, and, and environmental work and, you know, clean air, food, water, you know, uh, equality. Um, so you everything. Know, you, yeah, you got your hand I, in Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm I can't even go down the list on, you know, yeah. on everything. Like, even as a teenager, man, I was in, involved in, um, you know, looking out and speaking out and educating my, my, my other young peers through the Washington Area Improvisational Team Theater and, like I said, the D.C. Youth Ensemble, Everyman Street Theater. So I love going back to do that. I mean, I go back up to Ellington uh, multiple times a year, every chance mm-hmm. I get, you know, to teach, to speak to do other things and contribute my expertise and to bring that, you know, again, that capital back to the yeah. school. Uh, I donate to the school. Mm-hmm. I stay involved in various different ways, events that we do, or go up just to see the kids and yeah. see what they're doing or just to kind of hang out and kick it. So again, they see that this is a family. This is a community. We're involved. We're going to continue to hold them accountable. Trust me, I go up there all the time be like, don't mess up my school. Y'all mess up my school. I'm coming back to get you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so between getting involved in that way, you know, again, the gubernatorial races and other, you know, voting initiatives and things like that as well. Um, I've got tons of family and, and friends and extended family here. So just that quality time, man, of just coming back and just chilling, mm-hmm. just being with your people and just being regular Lamar. Because, again, I might be a superstar to some, right. but I'm just regular old, you know, dude from around the way, from the 202, you know, seriously. I mean, you know, I'm on the train, I'm walking, I'm, you know, go shopping, I'm, you know, this, that, I mean, whatever, just like a regular dude. Just chill. Yeah, just man, just you know, like go to a game, go see the Mystics, the Wizards, the Nats, the Caps, whatever, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
Um, I was born in Pittsburgh, so I'm okay. a Pittsburgh fan too. So you know, especially if the Caps are playing the Penguins, right. oh, yeah. I'm there. Wait, you know, the Pirates the and the Nats, I'm there. What, you know, you, now your Steelers are struggling. Oh uh, yeah, that's all right. We getting it together though. We getting it together. And you know what's cool about that? I went to the very last game in Three River Stadium, and guess who it was? Guess who it was? It was the Steelers and the Redskins. Wait, you won that one? Come on, man. What do you think? <laughs> well, but, you know, but just the same, I'm saying, how dope is that? Yeah. Like these two cities that are, you know, right part of my roots and my core. Yeah. Uh, it was awesome. And I was there. It was a rainy day, but I was not going to miss it. Right. I've had family that's had season tickets forever. So me and my uncle went. Yeah. You know, it was it was real dope. So, so yeah, man, just countless love for the right. city, man. There's so many things that I love to come back here and do. Again, just take in the city. Go to museums. Right. Go to see, you know, um, go to see art, yeah. you know. Go throughout the Smithsonian, go to different communities and, and get involved and yeah. just even just to see and support the stuff that folks are doing, you know, mm -hmm. even just the, what people might consider small things. Right. It doesn't matter. The Boys and Girls Club, yeah. the YMCA, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I need to get City Rec. I need you know to get what I mean? coach my basketball team. Hey, if right I lived now, here, right it'd now. be on. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'd be, look, it's we might have said Rucker Wisdom on the political <laughs> ticket, but it would be, well, well, actually Martin, right? But it would be, but it would be, I would be your assistant. You know, I, I, I'd be glad to. Yeah, man. Well, I don't know. They and I can over, coach. Oh, you can coach. Well, you probably I can, can coach. Take me. Hey, to I got skills. We got to I got city this. championships okay. and all kind of we stuff. We got to be about thirty for. this weekend. So Ooh. I might. Yeah, I know. That's all right. I, I can take my. I, I can. I can coach him up for you. I can coach him up for you, coach. Give him to me over the summer. <laughs> right, and yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm okay. ready. I will. Okay. We'll get him ready. What else you got going on? You got some more movies, some more projects. Yeah, man. Some really dope stuff. Um, actually, um, you know, the Jenkins brothers, you know, who are part of First Baptist family. Uh, we did a really cool film with them called uh, Sinners Wanted. Okay. So that's up and moving and rolling. Um, and uh, I have another incredible film set in 68 called Service to Man. Okay. Uh, and that uh, takes place in Nashville at Meharry Medical College. And it's, you know, a journey uh, through the lives of these college students who are, um, you know, at Meharry at the time. So a really interesting story of uh, some of the challenges of integration and in both directions you know when it comes to black folks dealing with you know the jim crow laws of the mm -hmm. 60s and then we got some white kids integrating meharry at the time yeah. you know so it's a really interesting journey of these kids trying to figure that out uh, against the cultural landscape at the time you know uh, really great film very proud of it uh, award-winning film so that's called service to man um, got a couple films that still haven't even been released yet um, and uh, and work, you know, and always have stuff in development. So there's uh, a lot of things coming, you know, and uh, just always working, always looking to develop new stories, trying to convince some of the other folks I know to get their scripts ready so we can rock with them. <laughs> all right. Um, but yeah, man, always receptive to new voices and new ideas. And uh, there's just so many stories yet to be told, you know, about historic, you know, folks, uh, and uh, and even the most, sometimes the most dynamic stories are just about regular folks you know yeah so don't ever underestimate the importance of your story tell your story tell the story that you know uh, and the story that you believe in and um, you know and put your heart in it and you'd be surprised what kind of you know real you know what kind of real magic happens I mean that's really what we really want with art is 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 truth is just to really witness the real truthful honest and sincere journey of real people again trying to figure it out you know and again that's that's really been the value of Greenleaf and so many of the other stories that I've been a part of, that's at least what I've tried to bring to it, you know, and what, hope, what I hope people get from it, you know, is that, all right, you know, it's this simple, you know, but at the same time, that's what makes it complex, that's what makes it challenging because when it has depth, when it has texture, and, uh, and, it's, and like I said, it has truth, people understand, and people identify with it because your truth identifies with their truth and they're like, I dig that, you know, and I want to see that. I want to be a part of that. Uh, so, so that's that's what it's always about for me. And it's finding those stories. And there's a lot of stuff that's out there that's happening. And like I said, I can't wait to even bring to life some of the other things that that I'm working on too. Some short stories, and even independent films and short films. It doesn't matter. You know, theater. Can't wait to get back on stage. I plan on doing directing a couple things before um, the the years out if I can. Even just stage readings or whatever. You know, I go to theater festivals and film festivals all the time. I love teaching. So 
been doing a lot more of that, doing master classes all around the country. So again, the theater festivals and film festivals out there, if you're interested in me coming and teaching and doing a master class, you know, at your event, at your convention, uh, public speaking, motivational speaking, all these kind of things, hosting events like tonight, you know, just all the different ways that I can contribute my training, my value, and my heart, and my passion and sense of purpose to whatever, you know, people are doing. That's, that's what this has always been about, man. So I'm just proud that I've been able to kind of figure it out, figure it out how I can be of value, how I can be of service, and uh, what I can do to make my heart, you know, sing, and to allow me to stand up straight. Because knowing who I am and, and understanding why God put me here, man, you know, so uh, it makes it so, so much simpler, and so much clearer, and so gratifying, and so joyful, man, to come in here and just, and just, just be, nah, just, and just be me, man, you know, I mean, that's, it's, it's, it shouldn't be considered unconventional wisdom, <laughs> but sometimes it is, sometimes you know, it but is. I believe this you wisdom know, yeah. exists in everybody, right. and that's why, that's why I really love and respect you, brother, that's why I uh, you, really I appreciate, appreciate the things that you stand for and that you've been working to do with your life on and off camera. You know, again, what I believe this show is about, is going to continue to be about, is again, is it extracting this kind of wisdom from everybody and, and then actually encouraging it in everybody too. Because everybody's got it. We all know it. We just got to sometimes tap back into it Absolutely. or have the courage to say, I know what it is. I just got to go ahead and step out on faith and invest in right. it, you know? And that's what's hard to do, especially some of us just living day to day, check to check. Yeah. You're just doing what you got to do, but you know it ain't really what you're supposed to be doing. So figure, if you know what you're supposed to be doing, then put yourself in a position to do that. Or just start doing it, even if you do it simultaneously. I used to wear myself out. I still do. But when I was just kind of figuring out what some of this stuff was, whew, I used to wear myself out, man. Wasn't getting paid or compensated for anything. Was volunteering all kind of different places. I mean, two, three jobs at the same time and volunteering two, three, four. Different. That's what that's what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Right. And I honestly believe, honestly believe, that's how it works. Yeah. If you're willing to do the work, yeah. and I was willing because I loved it, and all I had to do was be me, and I always had the energy because yeah. God will give you the energy. Right. And God will lay the things out for you and create and, you know, opportunity and pathways and remove things and people and obstacles if you do what you're supposed to be doing. God ain't going to be in your way. That's the last force that's going to be in your way. And all the other things that get in your way, that's God saying, okay, well, what you going to do? Let me see, you know, what you got in you. I know what's in you, but let me see if you know what you have in you to get through this, get around this, go under it, go over it, whatever. And you start proving that to yourself, can't nobody... You can't, man, you can't stop me. Right. Like, you can't stop me. I, I am unstop. You right. can't stop. I, I don't even want to dare you because there's people out there who'd be stupid enough to dare you. Right. Don't dare me because you're just going to put yourself in a bad spot because you can't win. I got too many soldiers. I got the king of all kings behind me. You can't win. Right. And we just have to just keep ourselves in the right space so we can be clean of heart. We can be keep that spirit pure so you can keep getting the information and the inspiration to keep doing what it is you're supposed to do. And it's so, it's so easy. It really, it's like, it's so easy. It's hard. It's like exhausting. But you go to sleep and then you wake up and your cup's full again. And then you go out and do it again. Yeah. Until it's all empty. That's, and then, you, yeah. then go to sleep again and do it all over yeah. again. Yeah.